what ISIS is doing with technology is certainly unlike anything that we've seen before with any of its predecessor terrorist organizations. You know, what I like to say is that ISIS is the first terrorist organization that has managed to occupy and hold both physical territory and digital territory. You know, what's interesting is what they're doing with technology, it's new, sort of exotic and less understood, um, but it's not the anomaly. It's probably more reflective of what's to come in terms of terrorist capabilities. Let's compare them to Al Qaeda which is really more of an ephemeral organization with lots of isolated cells. Um, you know, ISIS is more of a corporate structure, right? It has their fighting department, it has their marketing department, it has their sort of jihadi brides department. They even sort of go out and do acquisitions, much like a corporation does, right? You want some land in Nigeria, you want some sort of, you know, organized crime, go out and acquire it by making Boko Haram pay their allegiance to the Islamic State. You know, think of this as ISIS's version of a talent acquisition. Nobody should refute the fact that the fight against ISIS in the physical domain is, of course, more important than you know, the fight online. But they're also not mutually exclusive. What happens in one impacts the other. And so the old way of thinking about this is let's have two separate conversations. You know, one for the physical counterinsurgency with the military and policymakers and so forth. And then let's have a separate one with the private sector and technologists and so forth. And let's not talk to each other because they're sort of two separate worlds. And that's just not at all reflective of the type of world we live in right now. We've all seen the image of Jihadi John, and therefore we think that that is what Islamic State sends out as a message. That is by far and away the minority of what they do. And the vast majority of what they're putting out is material in Arabic, but it's nice pictures. Here are children playing at a fun fair. Here are food stalls. Here are hospitals. Here are people receiving care. It's all those types of pictures you see that's sort of suggesting life as normal. So that's very powerful to people who embrace that ideology because what it does is it gives them meaning. We need to look at the tactics that they're using that are allowing them to continue to engage in their activities in the same open internet that all of us enjoy. Um, and I think the mistake that we make is a mischaracterization as, of technology as being synonymous with communications. Technology does not equal communications. And when we draw that sort of comparison, it leads us to look at this notion of countering the extremist narrative online as some kind of panacea to what is, in fact, a multifaceted challenge. Right? So dealing with ISIS online really means we need to understand what are the technological capabilities um, that are allowing them to take over hashtags, that are allowing them to proliferate fake accounts, you know, that are allowing them to more effectively recruit. It's about so much more than just communications, um, and we need to look at it in, in, in more detail. So we have to shift away from this notion that technology is about countering the extremist narrative. That is just one part of it. ISIL messaging is not all about social media. Social media is, in some ways, the tip of the iceberg. There's a very fancy term in sociology called the availability heuristic, which means that thing that you see assumes gigantic proportions, much bigger proportion than it actually is. Because we see the few things they do on social media in English, we think everything they do is on social media. I wouldn't call ISIS tech savvy. I would say they use it a lot. And I would say that they have a lot of young, um, you know, technologically creative individuals who are doing what their entire generation is doing in terms of their level of sophistication. So I think that a lot of it has to do with timing. I think had ISIS uh, emerged seven years ago, they wouldn't have been doing the types of things online that they're able to do today. And I think a successor organization to ISIS seven years from now will make what they're doing today look like sort of yesterday's news.